afternoon everybody, it's Eric from the Reptile Room and today we're talking beauty snakes. So right here I have Mr. Ozzy Osbourne uh, and he's a Ridley's cave racer or a cave dwelling rat snake. Now they're called this because, well, guess, they live in caves. Uh, and now due to the nature of living in caves, these guys like to eat bats. They will hang off the stalactites of these caves uh, and they'll wait for the bats to come and go, and they'll pick them off as they're as they're coming and leaving. Really beautiful snakes, but maybe a little bit on the flighty side. Uh, but we call them Mr. Ozzy Osbourne because of Ozzy Osbourne's inf infamous little stunt with uh, the bat on stage. Uh, what's Eric, up, Amber? What? What are stalactites? Oh, <laughs> that's a great question, Amber. So inside of a cave system, you have big spikies coming up off the ground, and you got big spikies hanging down from the ste from the ceiling. Uh, stalactites are the ones hanging down from the ceiling. It's easy to remember because stalactites need to hold on really tight, whereas stalagmites growing up from the ground, well, they're growing tall. They're quite mighty. Uh, anyways, that's where this guy would be living. Uh, often often Asia and they are just fantastic snakes. He's not fully grown. He's got some growing to do These guys can hit the five six foot long mark uh, and they're really fascinating to keep Maybe not as handleable as a ball python, but in my opinion Really gorgeous considering this is not a morph. This is just the wild type form of this animal Let's take a look at some more This is our female. This is Miss Sharon Osborne and she's, uh, she's a lot more pale than Mr. Ozzy is. There's really no yellows on her, but a lot of electric blue. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, even though she's not as bright, she has a really pretty look to her. Now, she's not quite as good at holding on, but she's really, really sweet. Uh, she's never so much as taken a strike at me. Uh, when she first shipped to us, she came in with a few issues. She needed a little help. Um, and when she started doing better, she was just the sweetest little thing. Now she has a little bit of a cleft lip, it's hard to see on the camera there, and her tongue comes out a little bit funny, um, but that doesn't really hold her back, other than sometimes when she's eating, I have to remind her, hey, there's food in your mouth, you should finish that instead of just slithering away with uh, food hanging halfway out of your mouth and forgetting that it exists. But yeah, she is a, she's a beautiful little one, uh, and we're growing her up as well, uh, because these are just great snakes to have. Let's check out some more stuff. Hey, Amber. <laughs> you look so done already. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you think of the dichotomy of a snake simultaneously being called a beauty snake and a rat snake? Don't you think that's a little contradictory? Uh, I'll let you tell the viewers what dichotomy is while I answer the phone. She always makes fun of me for using the full English vernacular, but I think it's important. Anyways, dichotomy means uh, you have either one or the other. It's you have two options basically. It's 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 kind of a false concept because generally when presented a choice, there is more than two options. But people like to put false dichotomy things. So the idea of a snake being both beautiful and being called a rat snake could be considered a dichotomy, unless, for example, you think rats are beautiful because they are little beautiful things. Anywho, that's that. So there's some other uh, beauty snakes that we actually have for sale, and they are called Taiwan beauty snakes. Now these are essentially the same species, different subspecies um, of these of these beauty snakes. They're uh, old world rat snakes. Now these ones aren't quite as handled down yet, but let's get them under some better light and get a better look here. There we go. That's a much better shot. So as you can see, a much busier pattern on these guys. Now they are a lot smaller, these ones are significantly younger than Sharon and Ozzy there. And these guys aren't so much of a cave dweller, these are more out in the forest. Now you see how she's standing all tall with her neck there? That's a threat posture, she's letting me know that she's big. She's hooding up like a cobra, but not sideways like a cobra, more up and down, just trying to establish a presence. Now she is a little wiggly, we're working that out of her. You're okay sweetie, you're alright, you're, you're, no, I'm not gonna eat you. Um, but she, we have a couple of these up for sale, and uh, we also got a couple that we're holding back so we can grow them up and breed them as well. But I think I'm going to put this squirrely little one back in her enclosure so she can calm down, because she seems a little bit stressed out with me. These guys do take a little bit of work to get handled down, but once they're there, they are fantastic snakes. Look at how broad she is, how scary. What a big girl. 
Now we've also thrown together this bioactive enclosure. This is a full cycle bioactive, so we have isopods and springtails living in the substrate to break down waste matter, uh, which will then feed the plants that can grow, keeping things cycled, keeping them clean. It's actually a hollow cave all the way across the back and coming out the side there. So if you're interested in a beauty snake, this would be a wonderful little enclosure to get these guys going in. Anywho, folks, that's all we got for today. We will see you tomorrow in the next one. Also, thanks for the sudden influx of subscribers on the YouTube channel. Love the new traffic. Uh, welcome to the channel, and we'll catch you tomorrow.